Well, Washington is seeing some of the lowest temperatures in about 20 years. It is not nine below as it is out there in Minneapolis, but we want to thank Senator Harry Reid uh, for braving the cold to come inside and join us. Senator Reid, thank you. We really don't see pleasure. you very often. We hope we'll see you often, though, during <laughs> this, uh, this new year. Let's start out by talking about uh, unemployment benefits. It ran out for 1.3 million Americans in December. Uh, you have said, the president have say, has said, this is going to be one of the priority uh, items here. It's also going to cost $26 billion uh, for the year. Republicans are already saying no way unless you agree to somehow offset that with spending cuts. Are you willing to negotiate this on that? This is typical for Republican members of Congress. Not Republicans, but Republican members of Congress. The vast majority of American people believe that unemployment benefits should be extended. Never with unemployment like this have we ever even considered not extending them. And John McCain, chief economic advisor during his presidential campaign, Mark Zandi said, for every dollar we spend on unemployment benefits, the government and the country gets back 50 cents extra. Uh, it would. The, it, it's so important to do this. Uh, the gross domestic project product would be increased to by $23 billion. It's the right thing to do. We have long-term unemployment, and that's why uh, the American people support this. Democrats, independents, and Republicans. Well, Senator, you praised the budget deal back in December for reducing the deficit. You said that's something that had to be done, but aren't you just undoing that now with this? Bob, uh, the, the place we always look to find out what's happening with the deficit is Bull Simpson. They set a goal of $4 trillion. We've already approached $9 trillion. And if we did comprehensive immigration reform, it'd be, it would be taken care of. We'd be at $4 trillion. So it seems to me that we should start focusing as we have on reducing the debt. We've done that. But let's start focusing on helping the middle class. We have a situation in America today that is really not good. The last 30 years, the top 1% of Americans and their income and wealth has increased 300%. The middle class during that same 30 years has lost almost 10%. We've got to turn this around. I'm, I want I want the economy to be good. I want people to be rich, and I have nothing against rich people. But the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, the middle class is being squeezed out of existence. Well, let me just ask you about a, a straight-out uh, political question here. If the Republicans try to filibuster this, and so far I think there's only one Republican senator that has said he's ready to go along with you on this, do you have the votes to block a filibuster on this? It seems to me that here we have a bipartisan bill. We have one of the liberal members of the Senate, Jack Reed of Rhode Island, and one of the conservative members of the Senate, Dean Heller from Nevada. They say we should extend these unemployment benefits. And they're right. But and, that's the only Republican, am I not? Well, but remember, there's 55 of us, and there's 45 of them. It would seem to me that five Republicans in the Senate should agree with the Republicans around the country. Republicans around America want us to do something to extend these benefits. Why? Because it's good for the economy. It's good for the country. Every one of these people that's long-term unemployed, they get one of these checks. They spend the money. They don't put it in the bank. It helps small business. That's why small business favor this. The same reason they favor uh, doing something about minimum wage. They know it's good for the economy. And so Republicans in Congress have to get away from being Republicans in Congress. Background checks. 90% of the Americans want that. Republicans in Congress oppose it. Extending unemployment benefits. 75% of Americans want that done. Republicans in Congress oppose it. Extending minimum wage. Same thing. Two well, you know, it, I mean, they, they're, they're just not, they're out of touch with what's going on in America today. Let me just ask you this, Senator. Uh, I, I think most people would say that last, the last uh, meeting of Congress was probably the least productive, maybe in history, it's certainly the least productive that I can remember. What you seem to be saying to me is, listen, we're in for the absolute same thing. Nothing much is going to change here. Bob, unless the Republicans in Congress decide they should do something for the American people, I'm sorry to say that's true. Con rating of Congress is down. If somebody called me in a poll, I would vote with them. 
This is awful what's been going on. And but, that's, that's the reason, Bob, that we had to change the rules. They were even opposing people who were part of Obama's team, never in the history of the country. To show you how out of line this has gotten, my predecessor, one of my predecessors, Lyndon Johnson, was leader for six years. He had overcome one or two filibusters. Me, 430 filibusters. Things have gotten way out of whack, and that's why we changed the rules. And we're, now we say, majority is going to, majority, that's not such a bad word, is it? Majority is going to determine who can be on President Obama's team. The founding fathers, you know, this, this filibuster that they so love is not part of the Constitution. It's not a privilege, it's a right. Let me ask and, you I mean, this. I, I'm sorry, it's a privilege, not a right. And, and Bob, just uh, also I want to just say this. The Founding Fathers, uh, they decided what should be a, a supermajority, you know, impeachments and stuff like that. One of them wasn't approving nominations, approving nominations. Well, let me just ask you this. I mean, listening to you uh, this morning, uh, if Republicans continue to uh, throw up the kind of opposition you've been receiving, you say you've been receiving, uh, do you have plans to uh, extend this ban on filibusters? Right now, you've, you've worked out this rule, which they vehemently oppose, uh, that is, so they, it's very difficult for them to filibuster nominations. Would you be willing to just go to a, a Senate where you just majority rules and that's it? Well, uh, Bob, I think it's something that we have to understand. So that, you're thinking the, about that's, that? That's, that's, that's this. We cannot have a country that's paralyzed because of a group of people. The group of people, who are they? Tea Party driven Republicans in Congress. Not Republicans. I'm not here to badmouth Republicans around the country. I get a lot of support from Republicans in Nevada and always have had. But they're mainstream Republicans. They're not driven by this craziness that we have in well, America today. So the answer is this. We, we, we should pass raising the minimum wage, we should extend unemployment benefits, we should get rid of these tax loopholes and create jobs so the middle class can can start growing, not shrinking. But would you do away with filibusters entirely? Well, I'm we're not we're not there yet. I think that we, we I mean are you even thinking about that? No, I'm not thinking about it today. But I, I think You're that, saying I, you're holding that out, is that I, as a possibility? I think everyone should understand that the country cannot continue on the road that it's on. It cannot have, you cannot have, when you have vacancies in the judiciary as we've had, DC Circuit, some say it's more important than the Supreme Court, but it's at least the second most important. They said, we're not gonna fill these spots because we don't want to. You can't, you, that's not the way we legislate. Do you think that the minimum wage will pass? Can you get the votes to pass an increase in the minimum wage? I think that the, there are f five Republicans, five Republicans, Dean Heller plus four Republicans. Remember, Dean Heller is not uh, some maverick that is out uh, spewing socialism. Here's a guy who's a, really a conservative person, and he wants to extend unemployment benefits. I admire him for doing that. And can't we get four Republicans agree with the American people that we should do that? I would certainly hope so. So you're saying that that's still very much in doubt because you can't get four Republicans. Well, I'm saying hopefully, hopefully, you hopefully can we can get four more Republicans. Gee whiz, I mean, this me, is something we've never stopped unemployment. Let me benefits. just ask you quickly, getting back to the budget agreement we talked about that you all made in December, you have just two weeks to get those funds appropriated and allocated uh, to get the whole uh, package through the Congress again. Do you think that that's going to happen? Bob, the answer is yes, but let me just say this as a cautionary note. Because note. if you don't, Let me, a cautionary if you note. don't raise the debt ceiling. Yes, I understand, a cautionary note. Uh, what was done by Congressman Ryan and Senator Murray was historic. It's wonderful that these two people on opposite sides of the political spectrum got together and did good work. I will always admire them for that. And we should get the appropriation note. We got Mikulski, she's doing a great job with it, and she's working with the counterpart in the House. But Bob, I'm afraid, why am I afraid? It was just a matter of a couple months ago that two-thirds of the Republicans in the House of Representatives voted to keep the government closed and default on the debt. So I, I hope we can get this done, but I have really, I am, I am really concerned about what's going on with Republicans in Congress. Repeat to the, your, your viewers, two-thirds of the people in the House of Representatives, the Republicans, voted to close the government, keep it closed more than 16 days, and default on our debt. That, I mean, I, I want this to pass. I hope it does. It should. 
that we have an omnibus appropriation bill, but I don't know. What do you think about the future of Obamacare? Republicans were willing to shut down the government in an effort to kill it. They didn't do it. Then it had this disastrous rollout uh, when this is election year for uh, a bunch of your uh, Democrats in the Senate, uh -huh. 21 of them up, uh, uh, 21, 21 of us, 14 of them. Yeah. Bob? Um, will, the, will Democrats run yeah. as proud sponsors of Obamacare or will they run away from it? It's interesting. Uh, I, I can't come here and say the rollout was great. It was awful. But look, let, let's look where we are today. Uh, the website's been fixed. Perfect? No. But right now, as we speak, there are 9 million Americans, 9 million Americans who have health care that didn't have it before. We have, uh, we have, as you know, we have 3 million Medicare. We have 3 million on their policies because they're at reach age, they haven't reached age 26. They can stay on their parents' policy. And we have more than 2 million. They're coming. I talked to the President Chief of Staff a day or two ago, Dennis McDonough. They're coming on at the rate of 30,000 a day. Uh, we're, I think we're going to have some staggering numbers, uh, even more than this. Uh, come uh, April 1st. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're at 9 million already. It's the law. Is that important? Of course. Women are no longer considered a pre existing disability. Seniors, the donut holes being filled, they can have their checks, they can do pap smears, all this stuff that women couldn't do before. We ha insurance companies can't cancel you for no reason. We have. Uh, so, anyway, you think yeah, it's going to oh, work? It's, it's, already, it's already working. Right. And. Uh, if, and Republicans should get a life and start talking about doing something constructively. Right. They All they talk about is how bad Obamacare is. They don't talk about doing anything to improve it. Well, Let's we've got a couple of them in the wings here, and we'll see what they say about <laughs> it. Mr. Leader, thank you so you much for joining us. We appreciate having you.